Hey roamers, we're in the Bighorn Mountains of Wyoming. And this waterfall, Shell Falls, is running 3,600 gallons per second. We'll show you more on this episode of Roaming with Rosie. The climb up US 14 from Sheridan, Wyoming, via a portion of the Bighorn Mountains Byway, is beautiful in the summer months. At various points along the drive, there are signs to give you some insight into the geology's makeup and age. This is one of the oldest pieces of North America. In fact, these mountains were once sediments covered by ancient oceans for hundreds of millions of years. We stopped to admire the views at several points during the climb. Our first destination was the Burgess Junction Visitor Center, operated by the U.S. Forest Service. This facility is the perfect place to stop and learn about the area. We didn't have time for the self-guided trail that's there at the Visitor Center. However, the views from inside were great. They have a cute little gift shop, as well as maps, restrooms, and water. While we enjoyed a free cup of coffee, the rangers helped us decide what we could see with the time we had for the day. Armed with a plan, our destination is Shell Falls, located on US Highway 14, 21 miles southwest of Burgess Junction. And just like the name tells you, this is where Shell Creek comes to a 75-foot drop. The name is for the shell fossils found in the canyon walls. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Look at that thing! Okay, down we go. What goes down has to come back up. I'm halfway down the steps, and there's my view, and here's the rest. I'm stopping for another view. Tourists began coming here in the 1920s, but the first road wasn't built until 1932. Today, it's easy to get a good view. There are stairs and walkways that lead you to several informational viewpoints above the falls and to view the continuation of Shell Creek below. We have this bridge. Could this be bridge over troubled water? So Shell Falls is running 3,600 gallons per second. That's the equivalent of flushing 1,200 toilets in one second. This water carved out this pass in the Bighorn Mountains. Unfortunately, even with all these easy and safe ways to see it, some people attempt to forge their own paths 
resulting in dangerous search and rescues as well as extractions of those who don't survive this fall. We always stick to the trails, roads, and paths provided. We don't want this to be our final destination. There are some stairs involved to get to these exact viewpoints, but there is a paved, smooth pathway around where you can see a bit of it. From here, this is all paved and smooth. Still would probably have to stand up to see down there. On the way down to Shell Falls, you'll be driving along this ruined hillside where the timbers all knocked down. It was one of the highest tornadoes on record. And it tore up all that timber in 1959. It's revegetated. Looks like there's some young trees, 40, 50 year old trees, young trees. Wow, a tornado. The next place we wanted to see was the other direction from the Burgess Junction Visitor Center, but we didn't mind because there's beautiful views all along this byway. We were lucky to see several moose along this drive, although there was nowhere safe to pull over for photos. But here are some that were shared by the Forest Service so you can get an idea of what we saw. Our final stop before the sun was gone was to Medicine Wheel National Historic Landmark. Located about 30 miles east of Lovell and just 12 miles south of the Montana state line. We arrived just as the ranger was closing for the day, which meant that we were pretty much alone as we hiked to the top. From the parking lot to the Medicine Wheel is 1.4 miles uphill at 10,000 foot elevation. This is where the ranger station is. Where we started, here's maps, instructions, things that you need to respect and be careful of and not to change. And there's bears, although not seen very often, but we did see a moose, not on this trail, but in the area. So that's where the ranger station is. You've got pit toilets here and you've got more information. We're up here on the top of the big horns at about 10,000, 9,500 to 10,000 feet. Sun's gonna go down soon, but we finally got here today to go see this medicine wheel. This isn't something that was put in recently. This is an actual, we think in like an ancient tribal thing. So we'll tell you more when we get there. It's a mile and a half each way. And uh, we're gonna walk it. The geology suddenly changed as it came around the corner from the pine trees. Stop for water and continue on up. In 1970, the Medicine Wheel was made a National Historic Landmark. In 2011, the name was changed to Medicine Wheel Medicine Mountain National Historic Landmark. It has both religious and scientific significance, and parts of it have been radiocarbon dated to over 6,000 years ago. We've seen a lot of medicine wheels, but usually they were in places like Sedona where the tour companies set them up and maintain them and then charge people to bring them to them. <laughs> but this one is ancient, real, a sacred spot for many, many, many tribes. This pre-Columbian structure is on the top of a bluff. It consists of an 80-foot diameter stone circle with 28 spokes extending from the center to the rim to match the number of days in a lunar month. And it has a 245-foot circumference. An offering of sage. So these ribbons and scarves are sacred offerings. They have ceremonies here. Other evidence shows it's been in use by many regional Indian tribes, including the Arapaho, Bannock, Blackfeet, Cheyenne, 
Crow, Plains Cree, Shoshone, and Sioux. For most of these tribes today, the medicine wheel is regarded as part of a much larger spiritual landscape composed of the surrounding alpine forests and the mountain peaks. You can see the things coming out. Several ancient and important star alignments mark the cairns, which are human-made stone stacks, have been found here. Today, it is still used for ceremonies, vision quests, meditation, and prayer as a Native American sacred site. There are signs posted to let you know not to interfere with ceremonies and to avoid touching various prayer ribbons that are around the area. So we hiked up to the medicine wheel. The sun is starting to set. Got a long ways down to Sheridan from where we are. Jamie looked it up and the medicine wheel is at about 9,700 foot elevation. So the air's a little thin up here compared to what we're used to. Um, there's a mile and a half walk up to here and a mile and a half back. Didn't feel like a mile and a half, but we were walking pretty fast because we want to get down the mountains before it's completely dark. But here's what I'm looking at right now. I don't know if that's a, a weather thing or a satellite station. If you know, put it in the comments. I'd like to know what that is. Get him some water at this elevation and it's really dry right now. A little Dex. bit more? Dexter. Come on. Hey. Hey. A little bit more? Nope. The city of Sheridan was plotted in 1882 and named for Civil War General Philip Sheridan. It's still home to many buildings listed on the National Register of Historic Places, including much of its charming downtown. The original wood frame buildings were replaced with sturdier brick and stone between 1910 and 1920. Visitor guides proclaim they provide history with a view from Main Street to the magnificent backdrop of those Bighorn Mountains. That may be true unless it's under construction, which sadly, the Old West center of town was in fall of 2023, and it's only halfway done as of spring 2024. That didn't stop us from visiting the famous neon lights of the Mint Bar. The first drink was served here in 1907 and continues to be a gathering place for conducting business or hanging out. It's too cute. Established 1907. <laughs> in fact, Prohibition barely slowed business as they had a back room for, as they put it, those who disagreed with that amendment. The late 1940s is when it was completely redecorated in the rustic style you see today. When the Sheridan Inn opened in 1893, it was said by many to be the finest hotel between Chicago and San Francisco. It immediately became the social center for the Bighorn Country area, which at that time attracted many game hunting parties and notables from all parts of the United States. It was built after several railroads came to Sheridan. Often noted as one of the inn's most distinguishing architectural features, the covered porch wraps around the north, south, and east elevation. The inn was the first building in the area furnished with electrical power and bathtubs, lending travelers a taste of Eastern luxury in the West. William F. Cody, better known as Buffalo Bill, is said to have led the Grand March at the opening of the inn. He operated the inn from 1894 to 1896. Now Buffalo Bill liked to sit on that expansive veranda and audition acts for his Wild West show on the front lawn. In the 1950s, passenger rail service to Sheridan ended. Although it was named a National Historic Landmark in 1964, it was almost demolished a year later, but was purchased at the last moment. However, it remained closed for almost 50 years. Finally, in 2013, 
new owners completed renovations of the second and third floors and reopened it in 2015 with 22 newly renovated guest rooms. The first floor lobby is largely intact with the original beams, columns, fireplace, and front desk, and the historic flavor has been preserved. And as of August of 2023, the bar and grill was scheduled to reopen as well. And each of the 22 remodeled rooms are named after Buffalo Bill and 21 other people influential to his life. If you're looking for a place to let the kids play or to enjoy a summer picnic, we found a hidden gem in Sheridan, Kendrick Park. This lush green space offers a huge playground, an enormous public pool with water park features, and it's only 50 cents admission, a concert stage, a vintage ice cream stand, a fresh clear creek to get your feet wet, and they also have resident bison and elk. They must have been grazing the other side of the hill when we were there, but the park is home to this small herd of bison and elk. This was once the largest zoo in Wyoming, with common and exotic animals that was started in 1909. Because elk had been hunted almost to extinction in the area, the park was used as part of the reintroduction of them. The tree carvings are what brought us here to the park. In 2013, a decision was made that some trees in the park were no longer growing and experiencing some dieback, and therefore needed to be cut down. But they enlisted some creative students from the local high school to design sculptures that could be made out of the remaining trunks. First was the ice cream cone located at the ice cream stand, of course. For the next two summers, teacher David Peterson completed seven different sculptures with each taking 30 to 40 hours to complete. Of course, when people were drawn to the spectacle of a chainsaw wielding man chipping away at eight foot tree stumps, he often stopped to answer their questions. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this visit to Sheridan and the Bighorn Scenic Byway in Wyoming, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button as it really makes a difference for this channel. On our next episode, we'll be traveling to Casper, Wyoming, where we discovered a spooky fairy tale hike deep in the forest, a restaurant where giant size applies to the decor as well as the portions, and we go to one of the best museums we've ever visited. We've put links in this video's description for more information about all the places shown in this episode. There's also links for products and services we use and recommend. And when you come back and use those links, we may get a small commission and it's a great way at no additional cost to you to support Roaming with Rosie. Right now, if you haven't already, we'd love if you'd click that subscribe button in the corner of this video. And do click that bell so you'll be notified when we upload that new episode. As always, we would love to hear from you. So leave a comment so you can be part of the conversation. Until next time, see ya!